I've done 20,000 pounds, I've done 100,000 pounds, and today we're going to look at 10 cars that look incredible for under 10,000 pounds. It's as simple as that. Of course, this is biased, it's all my thought process on what I think great looking cars are. Let me know if you disagree in the comments down below, but let's get straight into it. Do hit the like button, subscribe, so if you're new without further ado, let's get straight into it. <laughs> Every so often, Citroen decides to pull out absolutely stunning cars, many of which have ended up being worth a small fortune at some point during their existences. I reckon the C6 is ripe to be one of the next examples of this, as it's a very different looking car, but it's incredibly cool looking, at least in my opinion. It comes with a 3 litre V6 engine that makes 215 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 9.1 seconds, though of course this is supposed to be a luxury executive car, so speed wasn't really the motive. This is a class that Citroen wasn't really playing in anymore when it came out. The exterior has got super clean flowing lines and the concave rear window is a stunning feature too, plus the interior is incredibly minimalist in exactly the right way. They're quite rare too, given just 23,400 were produced in total, though they aren't known for their reliability with too many potential issues to note here according to owners on forums. These start at around £2,200 and 10k is enough to get you a 2007 model with 50,000 miles on the clock. I do own a Mark 1 Mazda MX-5 and I absolutely love it, but I can't deny that the Mark 4 MX-5 is objectively an incredibly good looking King car. On release, I was only really blown away by the RF model, but as time has gone by, I've also gained an appreciation for the standard Roadster, which can come with a 1.5 litre inline four block within our price range, putting out 132 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 8 seconds. Where the third generation was sometimes criticised for being too rounded, with its multiple facelifts effectively sharpening it more and more each time, the ND arrives as a fully sharpened looking Miata. You can definitely tell people think it's good looking just by how many companies have made multiple models versions of the car like Hot Wheels and the likes. If it captures the imaginations of kids, it probably is the kind of car that catches the imaginations of big kids. And then of course you get the added benefit of the handling on these and generally reasonable reliability too. £9,000 around moon you'll find these listed for and 10 k will get you a 2016 model with 40 k on it. I am a major Alfa Romeo fan, I'll let you in on a little secret. A few months ago I came very close to pulling the trigger on one of these, a 147 GTA, which I think is probably the best looking Alfa you can buy for under 10k. Some people will say the Brera, and yes, I love the look of the Brera, but the 147 GTA just does things to me that I cannot explain. In part, it's also thanks to that real Busso 3.2 litre V6 engine, which makes 246 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 6.1 seconds, which sounds great too. I recently spoke with the 156 GTA, and the 147 shares the same engine and is a relatively similar prospect all in. It's got a nice wide body, typical Alpha horseshoe style wheels, and a classic Alpha front too with the nice interior. Just watch out for the electrical and gearbox related issues on these in particular. £9,000 around the moon I can find these listed for and they are relatively rare so under 10k the best I could find was from 2004 with 50k on the clock. I think Mercedes have always made great looking Grand Tourers and in my opinion it's what they do best in terms of road cars and the CL55 AMG is absolutely an example of this. Not only does it look amazing it comes with a massive engine too, a 5.4 litre V8 which makes 360 brake horsepower taking it to 60 in 5.8 seconds, which is reasonably punchy for a car of its age. And that was pre-facelift. Post-facelift, it came with a supercharger as well, which brought the power up to 493 brake horsepower. Insane for the money. The pre-facelift is cheaper, but the post-facelift is available within our price range as well. And it's a great looking car, regardless of being an AMG, to be honest, with the clean lines around the roof and windows. And by getting an AMG, you just enhance those looks with a bit more aggression, like the quad exit exhaust, the nice alloys and the likes. And what makes it even better is the reliability as the engines and gearboxes were pretty strong instead it's the pumps, hoses and electricals that can perish over time in these. They start at around £6,000 and 10k gets you a 2004 facelift model with pretty high mileage. When Lotus couldn't afford to update the Elise in line with new regulations in the late 1990s and early 2000s, it was General Motors that came to the rescue, helping them with the funds to build a whole new factory as long as they also built a whole new Vauxhall sports car which was this, the VX220, a lovely little car with Lotus stylings but usually more more reliable than the early S2 releases. It comes with a 2.2 litre inline four engine which makes 144 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 5.6 seconds, though it did have quicker options that are outside of our price range for this video. I love how boxy this car looks at the rear and sides with the nice curved front end and bulging arches. It really is a great looking car and honestly if it had a different badge I don't think it'd be as cheap as it is today. They start at around £8,500 and 10k will get you into a 2001 model with 70,000 miles on the clock. The 
engine is generally reliable and gearboxes are usually good too but if you test one that does feel a bit off walk away as those gearboxes are hard to replace so i'd love to hear your thoughts so far do you agree or disagree with my picks let me know in the comments down below are there any other cars that for ten thousand pounds look way better than these ones i would love to hear your thoughts and make sure you've hit like and subscribe as well because if you do i might make the same video again under five thousand pounds instead taking fifth on this list is a car that i absolutely adored as a kid the nissan 350z when this arrived it looked so different to everything else on the road and i can literally remember seeing them at primary school they come with a 3.5 litre v6 engine which makes 295 brake horsepower taking them to 60 in 5.6 seconds this car was originally designed by nissan's north american design team in the mid 90s and it flopped completely as it was supposed to be a modern take on the 240z and the original 240z designer didn't like it at all it wasn't just him though others didn't like it either and it was redesigned basically twice particularly around the front end to get the car to where we see it today which did actually do well from a sales perspective to get into one you need to spend around 4k at the bottom end and 10k will likely get you into a coupe with around 50k miles from 2006 throttle body issues are known as our camshaft and crankshaft position sensor problems synchro wear is known too so do run through gears to check how smoothly they change i do honestly have to own an impreza wrx sti at some point in my life because growing up watching rally these were my favorite car by a long way i think my personal favorite face is the blob eye but i'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below bug blob or hawkeye impreza excluding the hawkeye these came with a two liter turbocharged boxer 4 engine which makes 261 brake horsepower taking them to 60 in 5.3 seconds this is great news the two liter block is the one that's better known for reliability where the hawkeye got the 2.5 liter block that had ringland and head gasket issues scoobies do still sadly suffer from rust however so definitely get under anyone you might be buying but back to the looks this is another big kids car for me the huge wing on the rear the big single exit exhaust the bonnet scoop and some other typical features like mud flaps and bronze alloys it's a great looking car but more importantly it's iconic the start at around nine thousand pounds today with 10k getting you a high mileage 2003 model onto the top three now and in third we have my second favorite looking second generation audi tt the tts i love how wide and aggressive it looks so the ttrs has to take the top spot for the second gen if only it was available for under 10k that's why we have the tts though starting at around five and a half thousand pounds nowadays with 10k getting you a 2011 model with 50k on the clock its engine also isn't quite as cool as the ttrs's inline five instead it gets a two liter turbocharged inline four that makes 268 brake horsepower taking it to 60 in 5.2 seconds the mark ii tt was a great looking car regardless and the tts just added a bit more flair into the equation those wider wheel arches the more open grills around the front and the slight modifications to the lower part of the car all around makes it a properly muscular car for your money the only thing that doesn't get me going on these is the standard alloys but swap them for the rs ones and you are laughing the main points of failure with these come with the water pump and the tensioners i think the porsche boxster 987 s is a timeless design i honestly think if you look at a well-kept example today in the right spec as a non-car person it can look like a relatively new car though of course if you know you know either way after the first few years it came with a 3.4 liter flat six engine producing 290 brake horsepower taking it to 60 in 5.2 seconds matching the tts where the first gen had the controversial headlights and maybe slightly less defined features the 987 offered a way more set in stone package that took inspiration from the hallowed carrera gt with the roof up the cayman is definitely the better looking car and just in general the later generation boxes take it to a new level but from a value for money perspective none of them can compete they start at around seven and a half thousand pounds and 10k gets you into a 2008 model with 90 000 miles on the clock bore scoring and ims or rms failure are the horror stories on these and it was this engine that was most known for those issues so do get a second opinion on one taking the top spot we have one of the oldest cars on this list the old school jaguar xk8 in xkr spec meaning got a lovely 4.2 liter super supercharged v8 engine that makes 400 brake horsepower taking it to 60 in 5.2 seconds matching both previous cars on the list it was a successor to the xjs which was also a great looking car and took a lot of inspiration from the stunning e-type jag particularly around the front end in our spec you get a sporty design for sure but not over the top for me it's a very balanced design which will stand the test of time it even looks good as a convertible but only really with the roof down in my opinion add on the luxurious if a little bit regal interior and you've got effectively a time capsule classic sports car to get into one of these you'll need to spend around 4k at the bottom end and 10k will get you a 2001 model that's done around 75,000 miles timing chain failure is pretty rare but there are plenty of other issues that can crop up on these so at least according to me that is 10 cars that look amazing for under 10,000 pounds i hope you enjoyed it if you want to see 20,000 pounds instead then click up here subscribe as well down here huge thanks to the patrons for their support to you guys as well for watching i will see you in the next one